Hello students, the title of today's experiment is Study of Photosynthetic Oxygen Evolution in Hydrilla Plant. This module is an experimental module that aims to teach the student about oxygen evolution during photosynthesis using hydrilla plants. The first part of the experiment is a demonstration of oxygen evolution during photosynthesis by bubble counting method. In the second part of the experiment, we will study the effect of light intensities using the same method as the first part. Introduction Photosynthesis is a combination of biophysical and biochemical processes during which solar energy is captured and converted into chemical energy which is contained in the molecules of organic compounds. The central role of this process is the energy cycle of life. Virtually all of the organic materials required by living cells have been produced by photosynthetic organisms, including many types of photosynthetic bacteria. They use electrons from water and the energy of sunlight to convert atmospheric carbon dioxide into organic compounds. In plants, which developed later than the photosynthetic bacteria, photosynthesis occurs in a specialized intracellular organelle, the chloroplast. Chloroplasts carry out photosynthesis during the daylight hours. The products of photosynthetic light reaction, which are ATP and NADPH, are used directly by the photosynthetic cells for carbon fixation during the Kelvin cycle, also called the dark reaction, for other biosynthetic reactions. So chemically, this process involves the uptake of carbon dioxide, which in turn gets converted into carbohydrates and other organic compounds, and oxygen is evolved. The process can be measured, usually by measuring the volume of carbon dioxide consumed or influence of carbon dioxide concentration on the rate of photosynthesis or volume of oxygen evolved or total amount of dry mass or grain formed. The whole process is principally dependent on light, oxygen, temperature and water supply from the surrounding environment. The factors that can affect the whole process of photosynthesis include light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration, and temperature. In this experiment, the light intensity is being investigated on how this limiting factor can affect the rate of photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, light is used in the light-dependent reaction where it is needed for the photoactivation of electrons and the photolysis of water. Low light intensity will result in low production of photons. Therefore, there is less hydrogen ions being pumped, which results in the slower rate for photosynthesis. When there is a slower rate, there is less oxygen produced. Thus, the amount of bubbles formed becomes lesser. Hydrilla is a submerged rooted aquatic plant that forms dense mats in a wide variety of freshwater habitats. It is usually a gregarious plant that frequently forms dense interwined mats at the water surface. Hydrilla has very wide ecological amplitude, growing in a variety of aquatic habitats. Along with other aquatic plants, hydrilla is used for photosynthetic studies as well as studies on phytoremediation of water bodies. Now let's come to the materials and equipment required for the experiment. We will need a 500 ml beaker, a test tube, funnel, 0.1% potassium bicarbonate solution, distilled water, hydrilla plant, a plant light bulb for artificial light source. Methods. We will divide this experiment into two parts. In the first part, we will demonstrate the evolution of molecular oxygen during photosynthesis by hydrilla plants. For the experiment, hydrilla plant material was collected from a local water body. The plants were washed thoroughly with tap water and then with distilled water. 
we will employ the bubble counting method using a simple glass apparatus setup. In the second part of the experiment, we will study the effect of light intensity using the same bubble counting method. Now let's come to procedure A, which is demonstration of oxygen evolution during photosynthesis. Take a beaker and fill it with distilled water up to the 2 by 3rd mark. Now take some fresh and healthy hydrilla plants and cut their ends and tie them loosely with a thread. Insert the cut ends inside the neck of the funnel. Then the funnel is inverted inside the beaker making sure that all the hydrilla sprigs remain inside the funnel. Now add a few ml of 0.1% potassium bicarbonate solution. This serves as dissolved carbon dioxide source for the plants. Next, invert a test tube filled with water over the neck of the funnel so that the jet of the funnel remains inside the tube in vertical position. Mark the water level in the inverted test tube. Now, place the whole setup under sunlight or bright light while keeping the test tube erect. We can use a stand and clamp if necessary. Let it stand for about 15 to 20 minutes, after which we start counting the number of bubbles that escape from the cut end of the plant. Observation After some time, we see small bubbles of gas coming out of the hole of the stem of the funnel and are collected in the test tube. So we can observe that water in the test tube is slowly being displaced by the evolution of air bubbles. We can count the number of bubbles per minute coming out of the whole of cut ends of hydrilla plants and record them on a table. When we bring a burning matchstick in the gas, it starts burning more brightly, showing that the evolved gas is oxygen. Now let's come to procedure B, which is the study of the effect of light intensity on photosynthesis. Let us study the effect of differing light intensities on the rate of photosynthesis. In this experiment, the requirement of materials are the same as in the previous experiment. Photosynthetic organisms such as plants and algae use electromagnetic radiation from their visible spectrum to drive the synthesis of sugar molecules. Each pigment in chloroplasts of plant cells absorb the energy of certain wavelengths of light, causing a molecular chain reaction known as the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. The best wavelength of visible light for photosynthesis fall within the blue range, which is 425 to 450 nanometers, and red range, which is 600 to 700 nanometer. Therefore, the best light source for photosynthesis should ideally emit light in the blue and red ranges. Wavelengths of light outside of the red and blue ranges are not used by most plants and can contribute to heat buildup in plant tissues. This heat can damage plants and even interfere with photosynthesis. So in this study, we're using a LED plant bulb which produce a strong output in both the blue and red wavelengths with very little additional light in other regions to cause heat buildup and thus promote photosynthesis optimally. We will use three sets of the apparatus with hydrilla plants. Place one setup under low light intensity. This can be achieved by placing the apparatus in a corner of a room where there is dim light. Another setup is exposed to a high light intensity using LED bulbs.
the third setup is placed in the dark. After letting the setup settle for 15 to 20 minutes, we start counting the number of air bubbles evolved from the cut ends of the plants per minute in each setup and record them on a table. Observation Thus, we can make observations of oxygen evolution per minute during photosynthesis by each setup and record them on a table. The table shows the data collected upon subjecting the three setups to different light intensities. Three observations were made per intensity of light and averaged to get an approximate number of bubbles evolved. We can observe that no bubbles were produced when plants were placed in the dark, indicating no oxygen evolution. On the other hand, maximum number of bubbles were produced when the plants were illuminated with high light intensity. This suggests that photosynthesis is enhanced when hydrilla plants are subjected to light of high intensity. Now we have come to the conclusion of today's module. Plants and photosynthetic microorganisms can synthesize carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water. This is achieved by reducing carbon dioxide using the energy and the reducing power furnished by ATP and NADPH that are generated by the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. And oxygen is evolved as a byproduct. In today's experiment, we have observed the evolution of oxygen during photosynthesis using hydrilla as a plant material in a simple glass apparatus setup using the bubble counting method. Also, we have observed how differing light intensities affect the rate of photosynthesis by correlating the rate of oxygen evolution to the rate of photosynthesis. We were thus able to demonstrate that illumination with high light intensity enhanced photosynthesis by the hydrilla plants. Thank you.